So when you look at um, one of the taxes that is in this budget is um, the the wealth tax. Mm -hmm. Anyone who makes more than two hundred and twenty thousand dollars a year. Well, anyone who is in Vancouver trying to uh, live in Vancouver as a young professional couple uh, will tell you that that is hardly wealth. That to live in Vancouver and try and buy a home there is. Um, it, it is very, very difficult, and this well, has made it less affordable. Not even an apartment. Yes. Like. So, so that, uh, the top 1%, they call them, mm -hmm. um, will be taxed at 20.5%. Wow. So if well, you're a tech company... What was it before? I'm not sure what it, I I'm not sure I don't have that number. But it is yet. a significant jump. It's a significant jump. Okay. And so if you're a tech company and you're thinking about setting up in British Columbia... And your people are paid um, what's uh, normal in the tech area, um, and it comes to more than two hundred and twenty thousand. Where would you set up? Not here. No. Right. And so that's those are the kind of unintended consequences that come with this kind of taxation. Interesting. Yeah. Um. The, um, there is a new tax on, on pop, mm -hmm. um, which is interesting, and uh, we're not quite sure um, what that means. It says sugary carbonated drinks. Mm -hmm. So if you run a mom and pop operation or if you run a vending machine um, with, uh, that dispenses pop, so now you have to uh, pay PST. So what does that do to your business? What kind of paperwork does that add to your day to uh, now have to pay PST on POP? And that's the perspective that I'm looking at. Um, I'm not sure that the research shows that um, a tax on uh, sugary drinks um, makes a significant impact on health outcomes. Right. If it does, okay. But I'm thinking about the small business person. And I'm thinking about uh, the red tape that's involved in uh, submitting PST. And so this sugary tax, as much as they talk about, uh, you know, it's, an, it's unhealthy to drink pop, um, I think about the other side of it, where you're the business person, and now you're required to, um, to submit to the government, and how much that time that takes out of your week. Would the recent uh, thing of not having to pay MSP be a reason to be taxing? Like, like is that a, a means to an end to have this tax so you don't have to pay the MSP? Well, I think that, uh, you know, we left a significant surplus for uh, the current government. They increased taxes um, the first year in, in government and spent the surplus on top of that. So billions of dollars, and um, the the claim that uh, you're no longer paying MSP, it is absolutely true that you don't get a bill and you don't submit a bill. But when you ask municipal councils who are now paying the employer health tax um, because they are required to do so, and that's the replacement for the MSP, when you ask businesses that have um, a payroll over $500,000 who are now required to submit an employer health tax. Um, and they may have paid the MSP for their uh, people before, or they may not have. Right. But if you're a tech company and you're paying your people $150,000 a year, it doesn't take long to get to the $500,000. Again, if you're a tech com company, why would you set up in British Columbia? Well, isn't it... Are there, is MSP being charged in any other provinces currently? I'm not sure. I can certainly get that answer for you. Because um, my, my understanding was in the, in the budget speech that they, MSP has now gone from British Columbia. We were one of the last ones, if not the last one, to have that. Um, so. and, and definitely um, the, um, our government had, had cut MSP in half and had said that we would... Um, we would totally get rid of MSP when the budget could support that. What the NDP government did was 
they brought in a tax that they had not mentioned during the election okay. um, that specifically targets businesses with a payroll of more than 500000 Not just businesses, but municipalities. Um, so if you're not paying MSP uh, in a monthly bill, mm -hmm. you're paying MSP in your municipal taxes, in any um, retailer that pays more than 500000 dollars in wages right. because they've got to make up that money somewhere mm -hmm. and that's what that's what what i was thinking you know it's all it's all well and good to not pay for the bridges down in down at the coast it's all well and good not to have msp but where is that you know that that was a where revenue fund come coming in yes and now that we're not paying that how do we still have sustainable hospitals and sustainable yes. and and without a thriving economy which contributes greatly to our um, to our budget in the province, without that, um, it is very very difficult to uh, to grow the budget. 